Well, each year during May, we set aside a Sunday when we get to celebrate our seniors. And so the sermon this morning, my nine friends, is specifically for the nine of you, for Hannon and Jake, Mary Neal, Landon, Andrew, T.A., John, Ashton, and Jordan. I want you to take these words with you. They're designed to encourage you as you head out from this place to be the representatives of Christ Jesus that you've been called to be and shaped to be and we long to see in every one of you. You know, just as every baptismal service is an opportunity for all of us to renew our own baptismal vows, so too is every baccalaureate service a chance for us to ask ourselves, are we living into the full stature of Christian adulthood? We're all called to grow up and to go out and to be salt and light, to let the world see Christ Jesus living in every one of us. So this is a word for the nine of you, but even as I wrote it, I realized how much it is a word to me, and it is a word to the precious families that are right behind you or off to your left um, and all around you. We too need to hear this call on our lives. So my first charge to the nine of you this morning comes from both today's gospel reading and our psalm. And it is this, remember as you go out from this place that God loves you. And because God loves you, he promises that he will be with you through everything that is ever going to happen to you in this life. Now, there are going to be some moments in college and in your life beyond when you are going to feel like the world is crashing all in around you. You are going to be challenged by doubt and fear and despair. We can promise you that. It's just part of the human condition, emotions that are common to all of us. And sometimes they're going to come out of nowhere. You're going to find yourself in the middle of a party And you're going to wonder in that moment how you got there. Or you're going to suffer your first true heartbreak. Because there is no heartbreak like a college heartbreak. You're going to get that grade in the mail. It wasn't exactly what you wanted it to be. Or maybe the grades will come in and they're going to be exactly the grades for which you had been dreaming. And yet the joy of them is going to be fleeting. And you are going to find yourself wondering, well, if that won't bring joy into my life, what is all of this worth? And in those moments, I call you to open up the Word of God, or to call me, or to call Ben, or Betty, or your parents, and maybe we will take the time to open up God's Word and read to you what Jesus says to us this morning. Let not your hearts be troubled. In the midst of all of the chaos of life, believe in God. Believe in Jesus. Jesus calls us in our gospel reading to trust that our lives are in his hands. Jesus said, I've gone to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you can be. You can be who you were created to be. You are a creation of God. All nine of you were made by the Lord. He knew you from the foundations of the earth. He's given you dignity. He's made you for a purpose. He's made you so that you can have communion with him who is the source of everything. You know, when Jesus says to the disciples, he's not promising some future reality only. He's not just saying, you know, one day when your earthly travails are over, you will be with me in heaven. Rather, he's saying, I am preparing a place for you today. Today, Jesus wants to be with all of you. Today, he wants to show you that he is the way, that he is the truth, that he is the life. Today, he wants to empower every one of you to do Not just the mundane things that anybody in this life does. He wants to empower you to do the things that he did while he was in the world. 
And that's what Jesus means when he says that I will do anything in my limitless power to let you live like I lived. All you have to do, Jesus says, is ask. Our psalm sings of that God of love. The psalmist has a singing that he's the one who holds our souls in his hand. He's the one who will never let your foot slip. He's the one that takes you through the raging fire and over the raging seas, and he brings you into places of refreshment. I want you to remember that. The first time it gets really hard in college, that Jesus loves you. And that he will never, ever abandon you in this life or in the next. Now, the world that you're confronting is going to do everything in its power to make sure that you forget that. But the people who sit around you today at Christ Church and the people that are in those churches in Auburn or Tuscaloosa or wherever it is that you wind up, you're going to find those churches, right? Y'all all nod with me now. You're going to find those churches. Those people are already praying for you that you will not forget God's ever-present love for you. My second charge comes from the book of Acts, and it is this. Get out there and turn the world upside down. Now, there are going to be moments in your life in college and beyond when you are going to wonder, what exactly is this life supposed to be about? Maybe you'll take a freshman year philosophy class, and it's going to leave you reeling with the deepest questions that a human being can ask. What is the meaning of life? Why is there something rather than nothing? Why, maybe specifically, do I exist? What is my purpose? Well, if you get stuck on those questions, you can go to the YouTube page and find this sermon and fast forward to this moment because I know the answer to those questions. And you know the answer to those questions. You know, the world around us can sometimes seem like it is living in chaos, but the bones of the story of creation are clear. The story of creation is the deepest tragedy and the grandest adventure and the most wonderful romance that has ever been told, but it is the only story that is truly true. God is the reason why there is something and not nothing. God created everything that there is, including you. And when creation spun off into chaos and sin and death started to have its way with God's blessed creation, he remade it at the cost of his own life. And that remaking is a story that includes the nine of you. Now, the, the disciples in the book of Acts had learned this story straight from the source. This is what Jesus had been telling them. And to make it true, he came back from the grave and revealed himself to them. And how do we find these disciples? They're utterly transformed by knowing the true story of creation. And they cannot stop telling it and retelling it. You can drag them in front of the emperor and they're still going to be telling this story. They've been given a glimpse of the last chapter of the story of creation. And they had learned that sin does not win. That death does not win. But God wins. And he was remaking the world before their very eyes. The king of the world had come, and he was on the move, and their minds had been blown by the fact that they had a part to play in his work of remaking creation. He'd called them into his kingdom, and now what do we learn that they were doing? They were turning the world upside down. Because the news that they were sharing is the world's greatest news. Now, all nine of you are baptized into the faith of Christ Jesus. You live the same life as those disciples. You have a chapter in the story that God is telling. You, too, are called to get out there 
and turn the world upside down for the sake of the news of Jesus. How do you do that? You will be living a life very different than your sorority sisters or your fraternity brothers or the friends that you make in school because you're the ones that love your enemies. You're the ones who pray for those who persecute you. You're the ones who choose to be last rather than first. You're the ones who are always asking about the orphan, the alien, the widow, and the oppressed. You're always asking, how can I be like Jesus was? Because he's asked me to turn the world upside down for the, for the sake of his name. And living that way is because God loves you and that he loves you enough to give you purpose. That's the meaning of life. Now, your philosophy professor and everything else in this world is going to try to tell you and sell you some false bill of goods about an alternative narrative to that one. They're going to tell you that greed is good. They're going to tell you that you are the all-singing, all-dancing center of the universe, that you are a unique snowflake. I'm here to tell you that you have a job. You have a vocation. And it is to bring glory to the God who loves you and who gives you the dignity of saying he wants to use you. Now, the people around you at Christ Church are going to be praying that you never forget that. And the people in those churches in Auburn or Tuscaloosa or beyond, right, they're going to be praying for you and encouraging you and opening up God's word with you so that you'll always know the truth that you'll know the goodness of King Jesus. My final charge comes from 1 Peter, and it is this. Remember who you are. There are likely going to be moments in your life in college and beyond when you are going to fall. You are going to fall prey to the temptations of the world. You're going to believe the lies that the world tells that money or the right career or the right car or the right spouse or the right clothes or the right Greek letters above the door, that these things are going to make you happy. They are not capable of making you happy. The only thing in this life that can bring lasting and true joy is to taste and see that God is good. Hannon, Jake, Mary Neal, Landon, Andrew, T.A., John, Ashton, Jordan. Peter tells you this morning that you are a chosen and holy people. Peter calls you a royal priesthood. I'm looking at nine priests of the gospel of God. You are his own sons and daughters, and you have been purchased at the most extravagant price. You've been called out of darkness into God's marvelous light. And I promise you this, if you live in that light rather than the darkness of the world, then God will always be right before you, guiding you through it all so that you'll live out His plans for the sake of His glory, and I promise you that your life will be far grander and far richer and far harder than any life that this world is going to try to sell you as the easy and good life. Ben is going to come now and give you each a gift from the people of Christ Church, and uh, it is this cross Uh, that came from Jerusalem. It's olive wood that was harvested uh, in Jerusalem, outside of Jerusalem. And we're going to give you each one of these, and you know what this is for, right? I want you to take this, and I want you to hang it in your dorm room or in your apartment. And whenever you find yourself forgetting that God loves you, or you find yourself, as all of us find ourselves in seasons of our lives, neglecting his purposes for you. I want you to look at this cross, and I want this cross to let you remember who you are. 
You are not just anyone. You are a son of the king. You are a daughter of the king. And he's called you into marvelous light. I want you to look at that cross to remember that the world is going to try to get you to trust in anything other than the cross of Christ. And it will be lying to you. But the people of Christ Church and of those churches where you're going to find homes where you go, our job is to tell you the truth. We're praying for you. We're praying that you'll look at this sign, this cross, this symbol of God's extravagant love for you, and you would remember that he loves you enough to stretch out his arms on the hardwood of the cross, that you might become the saved ones who save others by giving them the news of Jesus. We love you, and we're proud of you. And I want you to know that no matter what happens in your life from this day forward, the love that we have for you and our pride for you will never end. This will always be home to you. And so whether you come home in a ticker tape parade or you come back into this church at some point crawling on your hands and your knees, you will always find a home here proud of you. We love you. And here's the last thing I want to say. This church needs you. We need to see you going out to live the life that God has called you to live because we need you to be an example to us. You are adults in the faith now. Help us remember who we are for the sake of His glory. Amen.